I want to describe how the choke circuit works on these Bing carburetors. And I have here a stripped down carburetor body. This portion of the carburetor is the area that does the choke and uh, it has a number of passages that go to it. The first one is the fuel passage and there's this little standpipe here that pulls fuel up out of the float bowl through this passage here and it comes out that little hole right there. The second uh, passage that comes into this is from the side of the carburetor that's facing the air box and on the side here is a hole that comes right through here. That lets air into the choke area. And then the third passage is the one that delivers the enriched mixture of air and fuel from the choke into the engine. And that comes through here, comes down this passage, and comes out this hole right here. Now the throttle butterfly plate sits about here, so the choke exit point going into the engine is in front of that butterfly. So even when the butterfly is closed, this passage is able to deliver the enriched air fuel mixture into the engine. Now, the other thing I want to show is that in the float bowl, there's a little chamber here that is used to put the fuel into the standpipe. So when you assemble the carburetor, the float bowl and that little well go right up around the standpipe. And when you look carefully, you'll see there's a small hole at the bottom of that well, and inside the well, there's a small orifice. What that does is let fuel fill this little well so that the choke circuit can get fuel on its own without the need to pull it up through the main jet. The second thing that goes on is this cover which has a little elbow here and it fits like that on the carburetor body. If you look here you'll see that that elbow fills, connects to this chamber, and so when air is pulled into the choke system, it actually fills this whole chamber up here. The question is, how does air get pulled into the choke chamber? And the way that that happens is, this hole here actually is at a much lower pressure than this hole here. So when the passage here is opened up, and can connect with the inlet air passage, you have a vacuum that's pulling air into the choke portion of the carburetor. So if we have air and we have fuel and we have a way to put the mixture into the engine, how does that get done? How do you mix the air and the fuel? And that's the function of this disc. It has a brass plate on the top and a metal body. If you look carefully, you'll see that there's a oval hole in the top of the disc that goes all the way through it. And there's also some small holes here, different sizes along this edge. One other thing to note is that in the center of the shaft is the letter R for right, and on the other disc you'll see a letter L for left. These have to match the appropriate carburetor or the choke won't work. There's one other marking which is on the shaft and it's this little dimple and it's over to one side on the shaft. So for this particular carburetor, this fits on like this and for both of these choke discs, the dimple is closest to the air inlet. So that's another way to tell that you've got the right disc with the right carburetor. Now, when the choke lever is pulled all the way up, that pushes the lever all the way down. So about this position is a closed choke. And as you pull up on the lever, 
then what happens is the disc rotates and as it rotates it opens up this chamber and it lets the mixture increase how much mixture goes down that pipe into the engine. So that gives us a graduation for letting the mixture go in. One other thing to notice then is how do you get the fuel and the air together. And I took the other choke disc and pried up the brass plate from the metal body. And if you look carefully, you'll see that there is a circular passage that's cut into the body that connects with the oval entry point for the air. And if you look as I roll it over, that passage actually goes all the way behind these fuel holes. So what happens is when this is opening up, the little fuel holes are lining up with the fuel entrance, and that passage is used to pull fuel up through the standpipe, through the fuel hole, through the passage to mix with air in this chamber. The reason the fuel can go up that is because we have a vacuum and we're pulling a vacuum not only to pull the air in to the housing and down through the oval hole, but that vacuum is expressed through that passage and creates a vacuum that pulls fuel up out of the standpipe. So we have an ability now to mix the air and the fuel as we turn the choke from fully closed, we start having the small fuel hole over the fuel entry port. And as we go further, we get the next bigger hole and the next bigger hole. And finally, we have the largest hole when the choke lever is all the way down, which means this choke shaft is all the way rotated toward about the 2 o'clock position. So that's how it works.